Okay, so today, um, today what we're going to go over is how to write a contract as is lock, stock, and barrel. Okay, how many people in this room have written an as is contract? Everybody's written a some kind of any type of as is contract. So in comparison, I'll go off of that a little bit. In comparison, in Texas, every single contract is considered as is. No if, ands, or buts. So then you purchase an option period, right? So what are they buying when they're buying an option period? The right to inspect the house and ask for repairs, right? They're paying for the 15, 10, 15 days, right? So here's, I'll tell a couple of stories and you guys know that I've got stories for just about everything, okay? I'll tell you a couple of stories. Um, me, myself, and I, I've been using as is. There are standard clauses and we will pull that up. Um, if you go to uh, ORIC, shoot, you go to ORIC.OK.GOV <coughs> or Oklahoma.gov forward slash ORIC, go down to contracts and forms. And then when you go down to contracts and forms, you're going to go to residential. Okay? Everybody still with me? All right. And then whenever you do that, let's just pull up the residential sale uh, contract. And I'm going to download this <coughs> just so that you guys can see exactly what I'm doing, okay? The second thing I want you to do whenever you go to ORIC is I want you to pull up under residential is I want you to pull up standard clauses. I want you to notice here it says effective 2022 effective 2022 what year is it 2022 that's right so this is up to date now I am going to point out uh, some typos and stuff in here and I'm not saying that I'm writing contracts or anything but what I am saying is that um, sometimes they get it wrong okay so um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop open this Oklahoma residential standard contract and we're going to view it uh, full screen mode, I think. Okay. Who's familiar with this contract? Everybody's hands pop up, right? If you're not familiar with it, get familiar with it. You're not really a realtor. Okay. So this is how we um, write our contracts, so on and so forth. Okay. And um, whenever you're going through here, um, a lot of folks, what they like to do is they like to go down to old, uh, the old standby section 13, all right? And then whenever they write the as is contract, then they just go right in here and they go as is, right? Or if they're really affluent, then they go seller not requesting any repairs, right? Is this an as-is contract? And I'm looking for a devil's advocate for somebody to argue with me here. So is this an as-is contract? What can happen in this contract? Anything with title or, I mean, what do you, you know, sorry. I'm, I'm digging for anything. It's not there's not just there's inspections, if there's other stuff in there that can be. That's what I want right there inspections so as is seller not requesting repairs okay so here's here's what happens okay you're the listing agent you're the buyer's agent or whatever right and so the buyer comes in hot and heavy okay I want this house I want this house I want this house okay great so we give Dustin a call Dustin's like he gets them pre-approved okay great all right so we're, we're just like, and this is all Saturday night. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, great. We show them 15 houses. They get into the house. It's very exciting, right? It's like, they're fit. are they going to make the pass? Are they going to make the pass? Are they going to make the touchdown? What's going on? Okay, he's got the ball now. Okay, he's got the ball. Okay, great. We're going to make this offer. Everybody's emotions are very high, right? We're getting the rush because we like to sell stuff, right? We like to sell houses. This is what, this is what I live for. I don't know what you guys, right? But I like this. I like this part of the deal okay so this is my favorite part because now i can construct a deal all right so i'm showing the house showing the house showing the house the person says hey i really want this house how can i win this deal 
well, there's three other offers on there. Okay, great. Well, let's go in. Let's create an as-is offer. This is a pretty good house. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll do the as-is offer. Now, Mr. or Mrs. Buyer, you know what that means. What that means is, is that you are buying the house in its current state and condition, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care. I've got to live here, right? I see me raising my grandbabies in this house, right? I lost my job. You know, I got sick three years ago. I had a foreclosure seven years ago. Whatever it is. Oh, my goodness. Right? And we care for these people. We genuinely care for these people. And we say, okay, let's go ahead and get you into this house as is. Do you have any experience doing remodels? Yes, my husband has a construction uh, business. You know, he's not really able, but he can help me. And we can do most of the, uh, the small things here here and there. Like we would talk about the blue phase, right? Caulking around windows, replacing carpet, stuff of that nature, right? Okay, great. So we get under contract. Everybody's happy. It's full price offer, 5,000 in closing costs, FHA loan, 3.5% down. And then we notate as is seller not requesting repairs. Now we're representing the buyer, or buyer not requesting repairs, okay? I work with a lot of sellers. So buyer, okay, great. Now the other agent, the listing agent, they read this and they present this to their seller and the seller goes, man, this is really nice, right? This is really nice. We're willing to give them those closing costs because I got three offers. Two of them were full price. One was 10,000 low, so we didn't really like that one. The other one was a USDA loan they didn't think the house would do USDA, but they didn't ask for any closing costs. We're FHA, right? A little bit stronger loan. And then we've got 3.5% down, so we're a little bit stronger candidate. And we looked at the house, we think it'll go FHA, okay? But we have that 5,000. So they're willing to give us that $5,000 because we're not gonna ask for any repairs, right? So what we did is we made a deal we negotiated the repairs in lieu of sales price, or in this case, closing costs. Everybody tracking. All right? So from the listing agent side, they're looking at this, and we've got three pretty similar offers. One was a turd. You've always got every bulk of offers. You always got one that's a turd, and that's the person who's going to chirp and be pissed because they didn't get the deal, just FYI. Then you got two. They're gonna have several that are gonna be very, very similar. And then you put them all out, right? And then the sellers are going to decide with you, consulting them, which offer they're gonna take, right? And if you're one of those three offers, keep the names on the last page where it says who's writing the contracts. Don't tell them which one's yours. Keep it fair, because that's a multiple offer situation, okay? <clears throat> now, so you're, presenting these offers as a listing agent and they're going wow no repairs and then the listing agent says should be a lock stock and barrel deal right because they're not going to ask for any repairs so you know we'll just go right to appraisal and get our title work done should clean nice and easy right an inexperienced listing agent would say that right now I'm going to tell you what really happens from the from the listing agent's point, that this is what happens, okay? What happens is, is that on page, where is it at? Section seven, but on section seven, this contract gives the buyers certain rights, okay? They have the right to have this house investigation, investigated or inspected or reviewed. They have a time period in here, and if it's blank, it's 10 days. We usually, I usually suggest people write 15 days in there, give the inspectors a couple weeks to get it on there, right? And what 15 days does is that gives me two weeks and one day, right? Because the day you sign this contract counts as one of those days. So, <coughs> This gives the buyer the right to do that inspection. So, same lady, 
right? She uh, had a foreclosure seven years ago. Um, her husband is a disabled uh, ex-contractor, right? And she wants to help raise her grandbabies in the house, right? She's got good credit. However, um, she needs to get into a house. This is the house for her. She's going to raise her grandbabies in this house. Heartstring, 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 okay? And I'm not a cold calculated guy, but when you're dealing with your customers, you need to keep it level-headed because you're the voice of wisdom. And if they're emotionally over pouring over, right? Like our customer yesterday, we wrote that offer. I wrote that offer at eight o'clock last night. Emotionally, she was bubbling. And I love that. I absolutely love that. I gotta keep an evil, even plating field, right? Now, we're gonna get inspection periods and stuff. So now, now she says, okay, um, I'm a little worried because this is the biggest thing I've ever bought in my life. So I really, really need to get it inspected. I said, okay, you can get it inspected, but this is an as is. Remember that section 13 I wrote as is, buyer will ask for no repairs. So you can get it inspected, but you cannot ask for any repairs, okay? You smell what I'm stepping in? So now she says, okay, let's go ahead. I'll pay for the inspector, right? We love <coughs> inspectors. Let's get the inspector in there. Let's do a, and what, the bank? They require a pest inspection, do they not? So we need to go ahead and get that one done too. Okay, great. So now the, the, the inspections come back. They've got $1,200 worth of termite damage. And then um, he finds two broken windows and the soffit's rotting where the gutter's filled up, right? And then, oh my gosh, at the end of the report on the roof, there's some loose gravel on the roof where there was a pecan tree and the acid from the pecan tree loosened the gravel. So now we need to get a roofing inspection. You say, okay, I'm holding it together, right? I'm the buyer's agent, can't ask for any repairs, but now it's starting to freak her out because the roof's 14, 15 grand, right? Clean the gutters, you got a couple other days in there, you got $1,200, we're already at fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars $16,000. The seller knows not the better because the seller's over there and the seller is just saying, okay, well, it's an as is, I'm just waiting on this appraisal to come in. They're happy as a lark with their, because they've already given the closing costs. It's $5,000. I don't know about you, I'm from car, $5,000 is a lot of money, right? So it's not a lot of money when it's on paper, when you're negotiating, but if you treat it like it's important, you'll write the contract right. So now they get a roofer in there. What does a roofer do if they get on the roof? You know the answer to this, Spencer, right? Make it worth his time. They make it worth his time. They're gonna get a roof out the deal, right? I've never seen a roof, a roofer suggest the minimum amount of repairs. It's always an entire roof. And an entire roof is expensive, right? And so, um, and so that's what it is. And so now, now the roofer comes back and says, yeah, I will tell you, you need a new roof. I wouldn't put my family in, right? So now what's building in this buyer is this massive amount of anxiety and fear. And then so, so then she summons the courage and she comes to her buyer's representation. And she says, oh, I know, I know, but I have the right, I know we have wrote an as is, but I have the right to ask for repairs. And you, with a fiduciary duty to represent your client without bias, are going to say, yes ma'am, you're correct, it says right here in Section 7 that you have the right to ask for repairs. Not only that, but you have the right that if they do not agree to the repairs, to get your earnest money back. Now you've just held it off market for two weeks. Everybody tracking still? So what does that feel like as a buyer's agent? Corey. It feels terrible. That, that's an impossible situation. You've got to represent your client because of fiduciary duty, but at the same time, you made a deal and you, as the agent, were not wise enough to write it correctly. All right? You were not wise enough to write it correctly. If you've written an as-is contract like this, it doesn't matter. Now you're going to know the correct way. Okay? So, 
ran into this multiple times. In fact, I was a listing agent. In fact, it was an as-is contract. In fact, the buyer himself signed an addendum saying as-is, I will request no inspections, <laughs> right? And then we get down the road after 31 days and then he starts asking for repairs and we start declining and he keeps asking for repairs and he keeps declining and I stack the blocks back up on the table and then he asks for more repairs <coughs> not an as-is contract guys right and so my investor from Texas was very very upset and I was very upset because I did not remove the items in the contract in lieu of sales price and we came down $15,000 off the sales price. Just the sales price. So that's $15,000 in lieu of repairs and so on and so forth. So let's get to it. Um, that's the story uh, section of it. So uh, anybody on the Zoom have any questions so far? Doing good. Doing good. All right, good. All right, you're gonna have to verbally let me know so because I, I can't see the Zoom stuff. Okay, so this is the Oklahoma State contract. Let us go to the standard clauses and I'll put it back in full screen so that you guys can see it. Standard clauses are important. Standard clauses are important because we we are what and we are not what we are real estate agents, real, we are real estate agents and we are not lawyers right we are not attorneys so we see emily's on point yeah i mean i'm still got some cookies yeah I was gonna say, give her a cookie. bring this girl a cookie <laughs> okay all right so um we are not attorneys right but the state of Oklahoma gives out these standard clauses, okay? So whenever you can't figure something out, like inspection of septic and water supply, huh, that's in here, okay? Whenever you see people throwing stuff haphazardly in section 13, that's exactly what they're doing, is they're throwing it in there haphazardly. I'm not an attorney, nor do I want to be one, right? So I'm not going to write stuff in section 13 that makes me uh, be one okay so if you go all the way down this stupid thing is flipping like weird crazy there it is on number 11 standard clauses as is no inspections why no inspections because I'm going to show you that typo here come on man at the very bottom. I'm going to go real slow, real slow. Okay. Y'all see that? The very bottom. So number 10, as is clause, specified items. Do not use this one. Where space and additional provisions, paragraph, contract, form, permit, seller has disclosed to the buyer the existence of flippy page. Good night. All I did was click it, I swear, guys. Right there. Okay. As goes to the buyer, the existence of certain defects or problems, the defects relating to the property as listed below, notwithstanding any provision of his contract, neither seller, seller's agent, brokers, and their sales associates shall bear any expenses or have any liability for the defects of any damage or cost resulting therefrom, and it stops. And there's no more. It doesn't continue on the next page, so don't use that one because they didn't finish writing it, and they just pre-approved this in 2022, and I've sent several emails, but that's not they're not updating it, okay? I use number 11 explicitly, all right, because it's as is, no inspections, okay? Now, it's not that I don't want Rafter B to work, okay? But if somebody comes to me and they list a house, which you guys know, right? If there's a crappy house to be sold, I get to sell it, okay? And so it becomes a skill set to selling it. 
So when I'm the listing agent, I copy this as is into an addendum in the disclosures, and then guess what? I never get it back signed. I list it in the realtor remarks as is. They never write an as is contract. So I'm the dick because I listed an as is house and I told I'm trying to teach them how to do it. Continually, this is a continual thing. Every single week, Lexi's back there listening to me on the phone trying to educate our community on how to write an as is contract. That's why we're sitting here today. Okay, you guys, if you write an as is contract, explain to them that this language is what you're gonna explain. You are getting a reduced sales price. This house has been priced at 60,000 bucks because it is a piece of crap, because it is being sold as, 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 as is, and because the seller intends on not doing a dang thing but selling the house, right? Okay, so as is, no inspections. Buyer acknowledges that seller, seller's agents, broker, and their sales associates are making no representation or warranty concerning the past or present condition of the property or any improvements. Components, fixtures, equipment, and appliances in or on the property. In bold, in lieu of the provisions of the contract which have been stricken, Buyers purchasing the property in its present condition subject to any latent patent known or unknown defects. What does latent and patent mean? Obvious. Yep. I figured the preacher would know because he's got a thesaurus in his head. Okay, the buyer is purchasing the property in its present condition subject to any latent and patent known or unknown defects. Buyer acknowledges that the absence of any such representation or warranty, the condition of the property and the risks assumed by the buyer relating to latent and patent known or unknown defects have been taken into account by buyer in determining the purchase price buyer is willing to pay for the POS property. I added POS and I'm not an attorney. I'm from Colbert, so I can use a POS, okay? What's that mean? Who's gonna volunteer? Translate to do rant language. Piece of crap. Piece of crap. <laughs> this is a guy in overall standing out front of the house with a for sale sign, right? He has no shirt on, he can't even afford a wife beater. His house is very, very horrible, right? We're talking about nine kittens in a bedroom that gave birth in the bed. That's the kind of nasty I'm talking about, okay? He's standing outside with a for sale sign. Tom went through this house with me the other day, okay? And then he's gonna sell that house. Can you sell the house? Absolutely. Are we gonna do any repairs? Absolutely not, right? So in Hillbilly, what this means is, I won't sell this house, I want you to sell it. But by God, I ain't doing no repairs, you hear me, Brian? Right? So whenever you go and you turn back around and you say, okay, I'm the licensee holder, you're going to translate that to this, and this is the communication you're going to have to the real estate community and the possible buyers that says, this is how this house is being sold. Okay? But if it's all verbal... Or is it all verbal? Is there something you're putting in to write to back up what you're saying? This right here. Okay. So in the listing agreement, right, then the, 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 the seller of the house tells you as the listing agent, says, Tom, sell my house as is, right? We didn't get no repairs when we moved in here. Well, by golly, we ain't going to do one when we move out, right? So the conversation you need to have is, oh yeah, I'll sell it as is. No, that's not it. Okay, there's a standard clause for that. I will include the addendum in the disclosures and I will make it in the realtor remarks. However, I cannot prevent other agents who are not fully educated in the form of selling an as is house from presenting a non as is offer. And they go, sounds great, Brian, sell that house, right? It's your responsibility to put this wall up at the front because you don't want to have the wall at the back and then all of a sudden the daytime goes where it's all the happy part of the contract and y'all are running full steam ahead and then everybody starts asking for repairs. 
and then you find out that you didn't do it correctly. Okay? Very important. All right, so as is language. This needs to be in an addendum. This needs to be in, because it won't fit in section 13. So it needs to be an addendum. It needs to not be modified. It needs to be signed by all parties. And I've been having the other agents sign it. That'll put their line on, butt on the line. Do you understand what you're signing? Okay. Now, I do this, and a lot of times what I get is I get recourse. So you need to be prepared to back up your stuff, right? Our broker, our managing state broker, Kathy Fowler, is a text message away. She's willing to back you up on this. Once you write this and you have this signed, still not good enough, all right? Still not good enough. Now, you need to go back to your contract even if it's a, a, a buyer's agent sending you a contract, right? So the buyer, your listing agent, you've told them to do that addendum, but they send you an addendum. <clears throat> and all this section seven is just still there. Okay? If that's still there and the standard clause said that it would be as we're agreeing to the lower sales price, in lieu of inspections and repairs as stricken out in the contract. Remember the bold part? As stricken out in the contract. You go to PDF, a Acrobat, and you select this guy, and you cross every single line out. Not a big X, right? Every single line for Section 7. You'll notice that that's where it starts getting serious. And people say, oh, you know, my buyer has the right to do the inspection. No. They sold the right to do the inspection for $15,000. They sold it for $5,000 contribution. They sold it for 45 extra days. They sold it for 444, the lawn furniture on the back porch. It's in lieu of. It is a negotiation. You don't want to negotiate and then have this slip through because that means that you negotiated but you didn't get your shit in writing, so now all of a sudden your seller's gonna suffer, right? And you haven't presented, you haven't had the correct fiduciary duty protecting that particular seller in that instance. Now the buyer's agent may not be aware, may not understand, and they don't, they're not trying to plot against you. They're not two velociraptors running around a kitchen trying to eat you, okay? What they're doing is they're unaware and the buyer is probably unaware that they're going to come to the conclusion that they're going to want to repair. So you're preventing against that because you're wise enough to know that at some point that buyer is probably going to ask for a repair, right? Things change, right? Uncle Harry, he's a contractor. He follows the inspector around. You don't cross this out. They have the right to do the inspector. Uncle Harry, guess what? He's looking out for his niece's best interest, and he's been a contractor for five days, right? And he, he was the guy who went and grabbed the sheetrock off the trailer and put it in the middle of the room so the guys could actually do the real work. But he's going to inspect that house. So when he gets in that buyer's ear, he's going to build fear and anxiety, and that fear and anxiety is going to make it to where they ask for repairs, okay? And I just, I'm going to say that over and over again until it's like beating a dead horse, but I want to make sure you guys got it. So, section 10, section, this little flippy-doo thing is driving me nuts. The new question part? Yeah. Okay. So, cross all that out and then have all parties initial, right, beside it or below it or each yep. section or just that whole number seven? You can, you can do a margin initial okay. or a title initial. So, where it says seven here. I like to have them initial right in here. Okay. Okay. And what about, you know, no, don't care about the, the house, but just want a, like a termite inspection. It's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. All or nothing. Now, if they're required to do a, a termite inspection, you can 
put it in, put in the addendum that the termite will be allowed per the lender, right? Okay. But the seller is not going to do any repairs, so it's the buyer's responsibility at that point to treat. Okay. Yep. Now, once you get in there, it talks about, um, well, it's on this last page if I can keep it from flipping. Incurred expenses and release of earnest money. That would be an incurred expense for the buyer at that point. So they pay Spencer to treat the termites, right? And so he comes and treats, but he's gonna take their credit card right there. This deal busts at closing, they ain't getting that incurred expense back, okay? So uh, section seven, it's important to read right here. Buyer and seller shall have blank days, seven days if left blank, after the seller or seller's broker is, if applicable, receive the completed TRR to negotiate the treatment. Treatments, repairs, replacements prior to closing date, if a written agreement is not reached within the time period provision, the contract shall terminate and the earnest money return to who? Buyer. The buyer, right? So they added that two years ago, right? And then everybody, something new, we all want to use it in the contract, and then all of a sudden the seller doesn't do any repairs, we threaten them. Well, if you don't, if you don't replace this outlet cover, my buyer's going to get their earnest money back, right? And the seller's like, oh my goodness, I guess I gotta, I've got to do that outlet cover, right? It's 50 cents fix. Okay, and then they take and they, they'll take their TRR to the final walkthrough. Oh my, man, this isn't to the point, you know. I said that uh, I wanted agreeable gray fixing that patch on the wall and it's not the right color, you know, so watch it, okay, because I've, I've ran into everything, everything that you can think of with repairs and they turn you into a general contractor is what they do. So be careful with this because here's what happens is is when you cross this out, all of a sudden, unless there's an appraisal issue or a title issue that you can't get past, that earnest money is non-refundable. Your quote unquote option period is gone, it's deceased, it's finished, finito, not there. What I, what I used to say, Lexi, what, when we went to the store? What do you get from the store? Zero, zilch, nada, right? Had four little girls and then Adrian, four, six, six girls and then Adrian, seven girls, a lot of girls. And then we had to come up with cheers so that we knew not to ask for candy when we were leaving the store, right? And so zip, zero, nada, zilch, okay? Now, this is very hard as a listing agent because you mark this contract up like a vampire took advantage of this thing and it's got red all over it you get it initialed by your seller the seller understands what's going down you send it back to the buyer's agent usually the buyer's agent will freak out and they're going to send it to their broker they think that you're trying to get one over on them when all you're doing is clarifying what they wrote in the first place so you need to stick to your guns right because if you, if you write an as-is contract without crossing everything out, without writing the standard clauses, right, in an addendum, and everybody doesn't sign all that stuff, an initial in the margin, then you don't have an as-is contract. And what you've done is you've basically just given whatever money you've negotiated away to the buyer. Okay? Everybody clear? Now, what I did is earlier this week, we had, uh, I got one of my listings under contract, had another agent from outside our brokerage. I was thankful they showed it, right? Um, I already had an inspection and a pest inspection for that particular house, okay? And so I presented that to them before they made an offer so they knew what was up, okay? And so um, uh, they had the inspection, they had the pest inspection. 
Um, we had invoices where the pest inspection was treated by the sellers because uh, it fell out of contract, da 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 Okay, now we're gonna go back and the lady wants the house. So now we're at 150, we negotiate down to 137 as is. So that's $13,000 in my brain. The first argument with the uh, buyer's agent was, do you really think it's gonna appraise for 150? I said, well, I sure do sell a whole lot of houses to not think that it would appraise, but hey, whatever, right? If it doesn't appraise, it doesn't appraise, but that's, that's like three weeks in the future, you know? So we'll cross that bridge because what she was trying to do is make me doubt my abilities in the listing price so that she could haggle price, right? Sellers weren't going to have that, so I didn't do that. Then we turn back around and she says she throws in the as-is chip. It was written just like that one was written up there, as-is, buyer will ask for no inspections. <clears throat> so then I come back and I bloody up the contract and I mark out every single line. I send the standard clause over there, and then I say, here, we need this to go into a, you know, we want to accept the sales price. Here's the counter with the as-is, no repairs, no inspections. And then all of a sudden, the broker gets involved, right? Uber, expect, Uber respect for the broker, but he felt like this standard clause, in his opinion, of um, interpreting the standard clause, that it was removing the buyer's right, listen to this, and I want you to listen from like, you know how when you watch a cartoon on TV, you're watching it from over here and you're not in it, right? So a lot of times I'll do that and I'll remove myself from the situation. I'll review the conversations in my head and I'll review the contracts. So the buyer's agent was asking, was, was agreeable to an as-is contract in lieu of $13,000. When the broker got involved, he felt like, we were removing, we were bringing liability upon ourselves as agents, listing and buyer's agent, and he didn't want his agent to sign it because we were removing the buyer's right to inspect the house. No shit, Sherlock. That's exactly what we're doing. It's written on the damn paper. You interpreted it correctly, but we're not removing any, we're not adding any liability to ourselves because we're making it in black and white and and red, because I put a lot of red on the contract too. So it's very clear what we're all agreeing to. Why would you re-inspect the house? If a, if a house was inspected last week, is it gonna change in a week? Not normally. Not normally, that's right, right? So, so his interpretation was, no. But what we always have to do is we have to come together, right? So now we have a gap, but instead of a price gap that we gotta close, we've got a expectations gap, and we've got to close that expectations gap. So, and this is very short-lived, there's not very much left of this class. So we had to close this gap, and the expectation was, is that we didn't want, uh, as brokers, uh, to agree to not removing the buyer's right to inspect. My sellers already had inspections and gave them inspections, okay? So now, we wanted to give them the opportunity to do the inspection, so what's happening today? Because this was two days ago. We agreed to a three-day inspection period, okay? So in three-day inspection period, the sellers agreed to it, okay? We provided the inspections. So now to keep the contract together, we agreed to a three-day inspection period and the broker said to me, quote, unfricking quote, okay? Quote, unfricking quote, it's okay. I hope they watch this video. They'll learn something. So, quote unquote, are they gonna be able to find an inspector in three days? Seriously, Brian. I was like, well, if that's the case, why don't you put zero on it? Well, we still need to give them the opportunity. But the inspections that have already been done by licensed professionals are not good enough? Well, we still need to give them the opportunity. Are you saying that I doctored the inspections? Oh, no, 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 I'm not saying that what the fuck are you saying, right? Okay, this is the conversation. Lexi's hearing it live, right? And I'm going back and forth. They're gonna stay five, they're not gonna have their 10 days. <laughs> right, I mean, what, what I'm just that? trying to keep it together because I do care deeply for my sellers and this is like the fourth house I've sold for them. So I know, ex I know their character, I know how they want to sell houses, I know them, 
right? And I, and I have a deep fiduciary duty for them. I'm going to protect them, and they're going to get the full, full throttle Brian on every deal, okay? And that's why they hired me over and over again. So we agreed to three-day inspection period. What's happening today? An effing ins termite inspection. What's going to happen later today? Go ahead. It's three letters. TRR. What are they going to ask for? Some kind of repair. What's going to happen? No. No. What are they going to want to do? Drop it. Drop the deal. So. What happened to my lady on Monday? My seller. She had a kidney transplant. She's been waiting for four years for kidneys. So the whole time, she's stressed, out. she's stressed out about it. Whose house are we selling? My seller's mother's house who passed away. His dad passed away last year. I sold his house too. So my fiduciary duty is to protect my sellers from these agents who are ramrodding them at a very critical time in their lives. So it goes so much deeper than paper, but they rely on me to write it correctly. But at the end of the day, if they want to call me a dick for writing it this way, then I'm a dick. Because you know what's going to happen? I ramrodded her throughout her sur surgery, right? She agreed. She, she even called us and she says, hey, is the contract signed? They're asking for more stuff. We let, we let it go, right? We're like, okay, whatever. We're just going to let it expire, da 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 Right? I told the other agent that she's having surgery. I'm not going to bother her. I don't want the stress to hurt her healing. Well, then she says, she calls, she says, hey, I'll, I'll, if you, he signed it, I, I can, I'm coherent. I can sign it. Okay, great. So they signed the contract yesterday. We're in escrow. We're doing a termite inspection today. Watch what happens. And I might be wrong, okay? But it's to be seen, right? And you'll, it's, it's flipped to pending now. You'll see it flipped back to active. <laughs> You know, but this is going on. So the the biggest question here is the emotional play from other agents, other brokers, et cetera, et cetera, is that one, they do not have a firm grasp on fiduciary duty. Do not, if they even have an inkling of what it freaking means. The second is, do not know how to use this tool, don't know how it operates, don't know what it does to people because they're using it incorrectly. It's like having a really sharp knife, right? And you're trying to use it to pry open a tin can and you cut your finger off. Some people aren't smart enough to stop trying to do that crap, right? That's why you got a can opener. You're using the wrong tool in the wrong place, in the wrong way, right? Or moreover, you're trying to convince everybody else that the can opener is a sharp knife or that the sharp knife is a can opener, right? Oh man, I've used this knife my whole life. You know, I was in the Boy Scouts, I'm an Eagle Scout, and I always open my cans with this sharp knife. You ain't got no fingers left, moron. Right? It's like you need to come up with a better way to use your tools. Okay? So you canceled out all of seven. All of seven, every word. Go ahead. No, I mean, I, so you canceled out all of seven, and they're like, no. So then you just start over? Well, so then the proposal was from the broker to, yes, we started over with a brand new contract. Okay. Okay. And then did a three so the buyer's agent brought me a brand new contract okay. three days in the inspection period. She gave him the inspection report, the old one, right? Yeah, gave him the inspection reports. And they want to do another inspection? They want to pay for another one? They just didn't trust that one? Or they, they want another negotiation tool. They, want, they, they are, want to. They are positioning. Get lower. Oh, Do you remember yeah. Friends? <laughs> yeah, Friends in Low Places. That was the movie Friends. I hated. Oh, yeah. No. So, so they got their inspection period. I think they wanted to do the pest inspection because uh, the house had fleas in it. Anytime there's a house that has animals in it for any given time, then there's flea eggs in the carpet. When you turn the AC off and it gets hot in that said house, it makes the flea eggs hatch. And so when you show that, when you're showing a house and you feel them biting on your ankles, it's because there's biting on your ankles. There's fleas in there. Okay? Now, 
do you have to vacuum and treat that? Absolutely. Is it the seller's responsibility? No. So the best thing I can ask for right now at this point is that the termite inspector, because they're going to order a pest inspection, when you do a pest inspection for term, when you do a wood destroying pest inspection, which is what they're going to order, you're going to notate fleas? Any, in, any insects. Any insects, okay. There's actually a clause on the, it's the ORIC form, uh, Oklahoma Department of ODAP form, I'm sorry, Oklahoma Department of Forestry and Farming. There's actually a clause at the bottom of that form that says, was there any other pest presence, non-wood non destroying pest presence? And as an inspector, you have to note that. So he's going to notate the fleas on the bottom of the contract. Now they're going to be required to turn that termite inspection into who? Mr. Lender. The lender. Then the underwriter is going to see the pest inspection. And even though the termites are going to be clean, then they're going to come back and say there were other pests in said house. And then the underwriter is going to come back and say you're going to need to treat for them fleas. Right? Come on, man. Then the seller or the buyer is going to come back to the seller and say, well, the bank said. And then we're going to say cancel the contract right and the only thing i can do is tell them to take that pest inspection and send it to the underwriter immediately on right what's the little clause on the second contract did you mark out seven again you didn't do it again nope he didn't want to mark it out so three days so yesterday was day one today's day two tomorrow's day three because the inspection if we if we um, if we've marked it pending, I don't know. If, I think Kathy marked it pending yesterday, but we marked it pending. Sellers are like, okay, we'll keep it off the market for three days, but they ask for one repair, cancel, whatever, active again. So that's what the will, the sellers were willing to say okay to, and that's it. And that's the only yeah. form that a realtor can submit to the lender for termites. So if Tommy writes one on a piece of notebook paper and says, hey, your house had termites, yeah. it's null and void. Okay. It has to be an ODAP loan form. And as an o as an inspector, you have to have your license number and your certification number on that form. Okay. So not everybody, I heard a story of a guy, um, a home inspector that was doing termite inspections um, and not charging. He said, oh, I'll do a free termite inspection. Well, he was he was not a licensed termite inspector. There's a, a spot on most uh, inspector's forms, did you see termite? And if you're an inspector and you're not licensed as termite, you could be liable for that. You're, yeah. you, you're not allowed to put, I saw termite. You, you can say there's damage in the crawl space. You know, I would recommend an inspector, but as if you're not licensed in it, you're not supposed to put any kind of termite damage or anything on your report. So that's the only form that you can use. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we're about uh, 13 minutes over. Does anybody have any questions? And then I will wrap this. Do you still want to cross out number seven and go that way and then think it's going to be end up the way everybody's going to be bitching and end up going back to the, to the norm? It's fair to assume, yeah. Okay. So that's that's kind of like that's every type of circumstance that you can have with an as is when you write it and if you write it properly how you're going to have to deal with uh, the other agent and or broker yeah, and, and that, that um, clause that it says stricken or I don't know the words but it said from, from the yeah I mean it literally says it so I don't know where they're doing well I mean I know what they're doing they understand what they're doing. They're just trying to get a little over it. But there's a couple. There's there's one that they don't understand English. There's a second that 
understands it and wants to manipulate you. Yeah. So it's your job to be able to see that because they're not manipulating you, they're manipulating your sellers. Mm -hmm. And that's where fiduciary duty comes in. So you're, you're unfortunately, you'll work with some people that you will just, boop, you know, you get a contract done and it's just a glorious, glorious thing, right? They know their stuff, you feel confident, they're coachable, they listen, right? They understand that, you know, you both have skills and experience and that you can feed into each other and grow from it, right? And you have others that are, I uh, posted a thing last night, um, some people aren't willing to clap whenever you win, right? And so, guess what? That's how you figure out who your friends are, right? Is who's clapping whenever you're, you're seeing your successes. So, other agents, you know, they don't, they don't want to clap when you're winning. So, that's all it is. Okay, guys. Well, I'm going to stop the Zoom meeting. I'm going to stop the recording first. Um, anybody on the Zoom meeting have any questions?